So Chidi is rapidly becoming one of my favorite manufacturers in the modern day because their printers definitely stand the test to fight against the current king. And while other manufacturers are still producing PLA based machines, Chidi is hard focusing the advanced consumer market while still maintaining an easy printing environment for those advanced materials. <laughs> So this is the Q1 Pro, and like always, I am late to the game, so maybe you're already familiar with this machine. But this is the latest in the Chidi lineup, and trust me, it has a lot to offer. So I'm going to quickly blow through the specs here because I would prefer to keep this video based on my printing experience rather than the hard specs of the machine. So the Q1 Pro is operating a 245 by 245 by 240 millimeter build volume and that's kind of an odd middle ground. It is ever so slightly smaller than the X Plus 3 in the Bamboo lineup, but it is bigger than Creality's K1 and K1C. And as compared to those machines, you are going to get a little extra Z stability because this machine has two motors mounted to the left and right of the bed, whereas those other machines, they have a single mounted motor on the rear of the machine that rides on rails on the front left and the front right. Having two motors mounted to the bed also opens the door for a little bit of bed tilt calibration, which none of the aforementioned printers have the ability to do. And sticking with Chidi style, there is an integrated chamber heater, which is gonna allow you to get the chamber up to 60 degrees Celsius. I don't have a way of confirming whether it actually can do that. You've also got a hot end that can go up to 350 degrees Celsius. And Chidi does have this printer running dual sensors for the bed mesh calibration. And although they do ask you to use the paper method for Z offsetting, I have not one single time had an issue with the first layer and it's looked perfect every single time. Now, before we go any further, I need to thank the sponsor of today's video, FlexiSpot. So when I was building this brand new studio, they sent out this incredible rolling sit stand desk. And I admit I was just a little bit skeptical. I previously had a sit stand desk and it honestly wasn't that great. So with the inflated price of the flexi spot, I didn't think I was gonna find value in it. But boy, was I freaking wrong because this desk is on a genuine brand new level. Despite its name, this thing is definitely not flexible. It is seriously, seriously sturdy. And this thing has four predefined configurations for height, which is absolutely amazing when I'm rolling the desk around the studio. I can easily set this thing to sitting height when I'm working on a machine, but when it's time to work, I can set it right back to my perfect standing height. Personally, I find that I work best while standing because, let's face it, I'm a lazy man and of course, I don't want to be standing for hours on end. And while I have my use case for this desk, I genuinely think that everyone can make use of a unique desk like this one. So if you guys want to learn more about the FlexiSpot array of desks, please check the link in the description because I know that you guys are going to love it just like me. So this machine does obviously look different from the X3 series that Chidi launched last year. But other than that, most of the modifications I would consider improvements. I do not have an exact weight measurement for the Q1 Pro, but it is significantly smaller than the previous generation and that is gonna make maneuvering it a lot easier. It used to be a total pain to rotate the machine on the X Plus 3 in order to do filament maintenance, but on the Q1 Pro, honestly, it's not that bad. One thing to mention is that the GD Dry Box is no longer included with this printer. You can still purchase it from their website and it is compatible with the Q1 Pro, but if you want it, you are gonna have to purchase it separately. And sticking with the topic of filament, we now have an adapter to print on the Q1 Pro with a side mounted filament spool, but I definitely wouldn't recommend doing that because it's terribly flimsy, it's a very bad design, and within the first 30 minutes of printing, I had the spool fall off and trigger the tangled detection center. What? 
Bro, what are you talking about, man? Tangle. Tangle detection sensor. So to GD's success, that actually did successfully pause the print and when I noticed that the spool had fallen to the ground, I was able to remount the spool and resume the print and it did print successfully. So clearly they redesigned this entire printer from the ground up in terms of looks and while this is a matter of opinion, I do appreciate this new design much more. Though <laughs> I still don't quite know that I'm following their artistic vision because even though I appreciate it more, it still seems a little bit out there and kind of wild. Now, as for functionality of the design, the lid and the front door have vast improvements. So while I didn't actually have any print failures while testing this machine, of course I did want to check up on the printing process and the newly formed front door panel and lid panels make viewing the printing process significantly easier. So on the X3 series, the lid and the door panels were very oddly formed and it created some very big visual distractions. But on Q1 Pro, the lid is perfectly flat and the door is mostly flat as well. So there's no visual obstructions to the nozzle touching the hot end. And one thing that absolutely cannot go without being said, is that most creators are saying that this printer doesn't have a door handle and that is absolutely, completely, and entirely not true. Look, the door handle on the Q1 Pro sucks. Just gonna be honest, it sucks. But it has a door handle and I honestly don't know why anyone would say that it doesn't exist because it's very obvious, it exists. And now let's touch on the firmware and calibration just a little bit. We now have this very interesting vertically mounted screen. It's an odd change of pace, but honestly it works quite well. And if you are familiar with the X3 series, you're going to feel right at home using the firmware on the Q1 Pro. And while this firmware is definitely an upgrade over the previous generation, I still can't possibly drill it through my head why anyone is developing their own custom firmware to integrate with Clipper when Clipper Screen already exists. Clipper Screen is an open source alternative that's visually beautiful, it's getting regular upgrades, and as Clipper upgrades, Clipper Screen also upgrades, so there's no reason for your developers to do any additional work after the printer has been released. That being said, Chidi is not the only manufacturer creating these custom interfaces for Clipper, but at least the other manufacturers are creating more of a professional looking product. So onto actually what the interface offers. Well, nothing much out of the ordinary. It offers almost all of the same functionality that any other printer has offered in the last five or six years. So the screen doesn't offer much out of the ordinary, but one of my favorite unique features about the Q1 Pro is that on the homepage, after a print has been completed, there is a picture of a model that was just printed. You can click that picture and then you can just simply reprint that file. And like I said, there's not much out of the ordinary. You can of course turn the LEDs on and off. You can turn the chamber fan on and off. Any of the other fans on and off, you can move the print head around. You can move the bed up and down yada yada yada, all the basic features that every printer offers. And of course, calibration also needs to be mentioned. Chidi has done a fantastic job at including a bunch of calibration features that even other manufacturers don't offer. And honestly, all of these calibrations work very well. The only gripe that I have is that the implementation on the actual screen could be a little bit better. Simply navigating to the calibration that you want is a little bit confusing. The primary calibration menu offers you auto bed leveling, input shaping, and platform calibration. But what's confusing is that two of those options seem like the exact same. Anyway, if you can manage to find the calibration you want, you have direct access to bed meshing, input shaping, Z-tilt correction, 
the offset correction, as well as bed screw calibration. And if you haven't yet watched any videos on this printer from other creators, apparently that auto bed screw calibration is performed at the factory and upon delivery to your home, it is actually not a required calibration. The only time you need to actually perform this calibration is if there's some serious bed leveling issues. And of course, that is mentioned in the instruction manual, which yours truly didn't read. Now I do wish the screen had better prompts for the user in terms of calibration, but regardless, all of the calibrations are dead simple and easy to perform. And once all of the calibrations are successful, the printer just works. So as I mentioned before, during testing with the Q1 probe, I didn't have a single print failure. And honestly, everything that came off this printer looked beautiful. I even printed this compliant disc launcher with magnificently tiny tolerances and the Q1 Pro handled it like a dream. I did, however, give the disc launcher to an abusive toy player who happened to break it, though that is of no fault to the Q1 Pro. And honestly, the printer definitely outperformed my expectations in all of the other prints that I did as well. Now, I didn't print with as many exotic materials as some of the videos you're gonna find on YouTube. However, for these heated chamber printers, my torture test is a Flexi Dragon from Flexi Factory, and I print it in ABS. The reason why it is a torture test is because there are 77 unique pieces to this model, and the smallest one is four millimeters in width. And if any of these tiny pieces warp and peel off, well, the entire model is ruined and needs to be reprinted. Now, I'll admit I did use some nanopolymer on this model. However, I really consider that more of a cheap insurance policy and I highly recommend everyone else use it as well. Regardless, the ABS on this model printed absolutely perfectly. There is not a single model defect, not even one little tiny tailpiece warped and peeled up. And honestly, it printed better in ABS on the Q1 Pro than most printers will probably be able to print it in PLA. Overall, I'm honestly really loving the direction that Chidi is headed with their printers. You are getting a bamboo level product for a fraction of the price. But of course, if you only ever print PLA and you never plan to not print PLA, a $250 Bamboo Lab A1 is probably what you need to be looking at. But if there is ever going to be a chance that you might print some more advanced materials, then this is definitely a printer that you want to keep on your radar. Chidi Slicer is a derivative of Prusa Slicer, just like Bamboo Lab is a derivative of Prusa Slicer, so you're getting all of the same slicing algorithms. Because you're basically using Prusa Slicer, you essentially have the same slicing interface as well. GD has included a multitude of print profiles for more advanced materials, just like bamboo. And Chidi Slicer also has a built-in fluid visualizer, so you don't even need to go use the web browser. This is particularly useful if you have multiple Chidi printers, they're all gonna show up on the same page. So in my opinion, this slicing experience is exactly the same as bamboo. The printing experience is the same as bamboo. You're basically getting a bamboo level product, again, for a fraction of the price. And if you guys are interested in learning more about the Q1 Pro, I'm gonna have some links in the description. And if you happen to make a purchase with the affiliate links down below, the channel will get a small kickback for all of my efforts. Thank you so much for sticking around to the end of the video. And as always, I will see you guys in the next video. Bye. Why did I just snap?